Good afternoon again. If it's, if it's your first or second time visiting us, happy Sabbath and here's to a blessed one. We're glad that you can um, come and worship with us today for the, all those that are on YouTube as well. Welcome, welcome. For all those that aren't here with us, that can't be with us, welcome to them too, wherever they are. We're going to begin our service this morning with hymn number 73, Holy, Holy, Holy. Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, early in the morning our song shall rise to thee. Holy, 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 merciful and mighty, God in three persons, blessed Trinity. Scripture reading. Scripture reading is um, Genesis um, chapter 8 
and it's reading from verse 6 through to verse 12. It reads thus, and I'm reading from the Amplified um, Bible. At the end of 40 days, Noah opened a window of the ark which he had made and sent forth a raven which kept going to and fro until the waters were dried up from the land. Then he sent forth a dove to see if the waters had decreased from the surface of the ground. But the dove found no resting place on which to roost, and she returned to him to the ark, for the waters were yet on the surface of the whole land. So he put forth his hand and drew her to him into the ark. He waited another seven days and again sent forth the dove out of the ark. And another dove came back to him in the evening and behold, in her mouth was a newly sprouted and freshly plucked olive branch. So Noah knew that the waters had subsided from the land. Then he waited another seven days and sent forth the dove, but the dove did not return to him anymore. I think in other versions, it might have said in that last verse, he sent forth a raven that didn't return to him anymore. At this time, we have our pastoral prayer, Dr. Hamutis. I invite those who are able to kneel with me as we see the Lord in prayer. Almighty God, everlasting Father, Lord, we humbly bow in your presence. Father, we assemble on the seventh day, the day which you have blessed and hallowed as a mark of your creative power. Lord, even now, the, the most learned scientists seek to understand and discover the universe that you have made, but it is beyond, it's beyond our capability. Lord, you are so awesome, so powerful, so wise. And Lord, you created us in your image. And Lord, when, when your creation chose its own way and went astray, not willing to leave us to, to the consequences of our own sinfulness, Lord, you sent your only son to this earth in the, the likeness of sinful flesh that he might rebuke sin in the flesh. And so, Lord, we are so grateful to you for everything that you have done for us, for everything that you are doing. And Lord, we are waiting because we believe still the best is yet to come. Heavenly Father, have mercy on us. I pray for our sins, for our waywardness. Because even though, Lord, we have seen and we have perceived these things that I've spoken of, still day by day, Lord, we go our own, our own way. Father, we know that sin has separated us from our God. And Lord, I pray that you would just, you would cleanse our hearts, that you would pour again, Lord, your Holy Spirit into our life, that you would give us the strength to be able to make decisions for you each and every day that we may live lives of, of righteousness, so we may be a beacon of light in a cold and dark world at a time when the light of your love is needed more than ever before. Dear Father, we, we come before you with all of our needs, with all of our burdens, with all of our insecurities, with our fears, our doubts. And Lord, we just cast them at your feet, knowing that our God is not only able, but is willing, Father, to take away, to see to, to provide, to deal with all the issues that we find ourselves in. Lord, you said in Matthew that we should seek you first and your righteousness. And all the other things that we are concerned about will be added to us. Heavenly Father, help us to put you first in our life. Not just in word, not just one day a week, but may our the, the very fabric and the foundation of our life, Lord, may it be structured and built and wrapped around heavenly things. May we see Jesus day by day. May we seek to replicate him in the way that we are at work, with our family, with our loved ones, with strangers, with neighbors. And Lord, may everyone who comes into contact with us, may they know Christ through us. Lord, we can only do this if you would live 
your life in us and through us, through your Holy Spirit. So I pray, Father, that you would bless us and fill us. Pour your Spirit upon us, dear Lord, and may we do the works which glorify our Father in heaven. Father, I pray for each and every person who is perplexed and lonely at this time, who has maybe lost their work or their livelihood or their income. Lord, I pray for those who are fearful. I pray for those, Lord, who have lost loved ones who are, are maybe ill themselves. Lord, I pray that your Holy Spirit would draw close to each and every one of us. That you would give us, Lord, as you said in your word, that peace that passes understanding. Lord, that you would comfort everybody who is in need, that you would dry every tear. And Lord, just remind us that the God that we serve is still in control, even though the world looks like it may fall, dear Lord. Help us to understand that you are still on the throne. Lord, we know that these things that we are seeing at the moment are sent not to discourage or to overcome us, but that we would open our eyes and see that your coming is near even at the door. And so, Lord, I pray each and every one of us would have a, a new realization, Father, of what we must do in our life to be saved, of what we must put away in our life, Lord, to draw closer to you. Help us to have the power to overcome our pet sins, our pet temptations, Lord, that keep tripping us up each and every day, knowing that the time is at hand, dear Father. Help us, I pray. Help us as your church as we are trying to find new ways of, of performing your mission. Give us wisdom, dear Lord. Please be with your the leaders, the officers. May each and every one of us be experiencing a relationship with you every day, deeper and closer than we have ever had before, because, Lord, we need it right now. We, the things that we need, dear Lord, there are things that we cannot do for ourselves, and so we are completely reliant on you. Have mercy upon us, dear Father, in these last days. Draw us closer to you, I pray. And I pray that you would work through us to tell the world about our Savior, Jesus Christ. And may your coming be soon. Father, may I present the speaker before you this afternoon, Pastor Appiah, Lord, one of, one of us. Dear Father, I pray even now that you would cultivate his words that you through your Holy Spirit would speak to his mind and to his heart. And Lord, I pray that your Holy Spirit would add power to the words that you have given him to speak. Lord, may his words not be for us only, but may he even be reconverted in accordance with what he would say today. And Lord, may everything that is said be done to your name's honor and glory. Lord, in a special way, I pray for our young people in our midst. Father, you know the difficulties, the trials, the temptations that they are, are going through. Lord, I pray that you would just show them that all that glitters in the world, all that seems to have value in the world is, is a mere illusion, Father. But only in Christ do we really have the solution, the answer to all of our desires. Father, help us as parents to show a consistent example to our children so that there is no deviation between what they read in the word, what they see proclaimed on a Sabbath day and what they experience each and every day in the week in their home. May we show them Christ in everything that we do and say. Father, thank you for your perseverance, for your patience with us, for your love, for your kindness. Lord, I just pray Above all, dear Lord, I pray that the sacrifice of Christ would not be in vain for anybody on this call, for anybody watching on YouTube. Lord, I pray that each and every person would be doing all in their power to make their calling and election sure. And Father, we look forward to the day where we can meet you in the clouds of glory and we can sit and enjoy communion, supper with a lamb. Father, may it be so, I pray in Christ's name. Let the church say. Amen. Amen. Tom, we have our children's story. All right. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good, e good afternoon, I'm reminded. Um, good morning, particularly um, to the children. And um, I'm not going to ask how many children there are among us, because at least we're all children. 
but I know there are some um, younger ones um, um, among us. This morning or this afternoon, we're going to talk a little bit about um, trust and what it means. I guess um, we all we all have or are looking forward to flying on an airplane. There was a boy who had for a long time been looking forward to flying on an airplane. So the day came when he was on a flight journey on holiday with his family. Everyone on the flight was happy, excited, having a very good time and feeling good. The flight attendants also helped to make it exciting and were helping and showing some of the children around the aircraft. Suddenly a little boy noticed a red light that came on, which meant that they all, all passengers had to tighten their seatbelts. After a while, there was an announcement saying that due to changes in the weather, the ride was going to be a little rough and there may be a delay in landing. The passengers got a little uncomfortable and even began to question if they'll be landing safely. The light began to flicker, the red light. This time, there was a warning. There was a warning that the passengers that were going to go through some severe storms and um, it may continue for several minutes. This made the passengers even more anxious. The plane began to dip and you could see flashes of lightning from the window. Some passengers began to panic and others began to scream, some holding tightly on and um, others even could be heard saying, please, please save me, save me. Some even saying, Lord have mercy. The boy um, who had been looking forward to this holiday got really scared as well. And he started to think his dream flight was going to end badly. One other boy noticed that amid the panic, there was a little girl reading her book, smiling and didn't seem particularly concerned about what was going on. The boy asked her, why are you smiling? Can you not see what's happening? Everyone is scared and um, worrying that something bad may happen. Aren't you scared too? The girl began to smile and with some assurance she replied, actually, I'm not worried because the person who is piloting this plane is my father. He's taking, um, he's taking me back to my home and I've got complete trust in him that he won't let anything happen to me. So I'm sitting here peacefully reading my book. During this, the boy realized just as the little girl had completed, um, had complete trust in their father. Similarly, we too should have complete trust in our father, that is God. Just as the girl's father is going to take her safely home, God will take care of us and land us safely and help us get home. So the moral of this story is that um, be it any kind of trouble, however difficult the situation or problem may be, that you're going through. If you have complete trust in your father in heaven, you can rest assured that he will always stand by you and protect you. The Bible says that if we trust in the Lord um, with all our hearts, he will direct our way. So let us believe like this little girl that our father will not let us down. We we'll have the introduction of our speaker after which we will have a meditation. All right, our speaker um, needs little introduction. Uh, I'm not sure if there's anybody. Actually, I shouldn't make any assumptions. There may be one or two people who may be seeing um, a face for the first time. But um, I think Brother Otis in his prayer said that Pastor Appier is one of us. And after spending so many years in Wolverhampton, in Bilston, I think um, we can claim him indeed as one of us. Um, we're very privileged to have Pastor Appy here today. Um, he's been away for a couple of years. He um, left us and um, went to Boston 
I'm not sure if everybody knows where Boston is, Pastor, so you might want to tell them um, exactly where you are, other than the Boston in Lincolnshire, which is not the one. And um, you might also want to um, let us know what you've been up to, where so many of us have been locked down and waiting for um, um, other good news about when we're going to be able to um, worship together. But, you know, if we had been in church, we may not have been able to get Pastor up here. So the irony is that um, he's here today and we're very, 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 very privileged to have him. A few months ago, I contacted him and asked him if he could preach to us at some time. Knowing his busy diary, I expected him to say he wasn't available. But in fact, the week I spoke to him, he said he could preach on the very Sabbath. But that was a bit too soon. And um, it said that we'll organize it for some other time. So here we are, the 21st of November. Very, very privileged to have, you know, presence, Pastor. And um, thank you for coming along. And um, in your busy schedule, I hope that um, you will be best. So God bless you. Thank you. I think we'll have a meditation. Okay. <laughs> of a snow white dove he sends his pure sweet love a sign from above on the wings of a dove when trouble surround us when evils come the body grows weak the spirit grows numb when these things beset us, he doesn't forget us. He sends down his love on the wings of a dove. On the wings of a snow white dove, he sends his pure sweet love aside from above. When Noah had drifted on the flood many days, he searched for land in various ways. Troubles he had some, but wasn't forgotten. He sent down his love on the wings of a dove. On the wings of a snow white dove, he sends his pure sweet love, a sign from above, on the wings of a Sabbath, everyone. Sabbath. Sabbath, it's always um, good to come back home because <laughs> Wilson, Wilson is our home. 
when the brother Crosdale made contact with me a um, few months ago, straight away, I couldn't say no. I said yes. Mm -hmm. I've received a request from so many churches, but um, I have turned everyone down because we are uh, very busy over here. We, our churches are open. I'm preaching from church now. Mm. So we've opened um, for almost three months now. Mm. So, but uh, when Brother Cross they reached out to me, I said, no, I can't afford to miss this opportunity to reconnect with uh, Bill St. Church family. Amen. So this morning, I have gone through the list. I can see so many familiar faces and names that are Brother Scarlett and um, the rest of you. I was trying to look out for the other members, but I couldn't see Sister Williams and Sister Aden and Sister Mackenzie, Sister Hilton, Sister Woodstock, and the list goes on and on. Yeah. But I can see those um, of you who are on, Brother Donald and um, Brother Griffiths. It's like just back home. That is how I feel this morning. Mm -hmm. And I pray that the, uh, God is going to be with us as we go through this service. So Brother Crosby, thanks once again for reaching out to me. And Sister Bev, don't forget my... Dumplings, I still remember dumplings. <laughs> yeah. I, I praise God for Bill St. Church and I pray that the good time that we had, God is going to bless the church and you'll be able to continue in the same spirit. The mm -hmm. love and everything will continue. Um, on our part, the Lord has been good to us. We can't complain. We just got here as we're trying to settle. Um, this pandemic just strike and everything kind of uh, was put on hold. Um, at the moment, though, for those who may not be aware, we are in Massachusetts. We, um, I have two churches, one in um, Rhode Island and the other one in uh, Massachusetts. So we are be I'm pastoring two states. That is how um, difficult the, um, our life is. But they are not far from overly far, so we can still manage to commit between the two. Mm -hmm. And the Lord has been good to us. We have been welcoming very well since we've been here. Um, it's just like we've been with them for a long time. That is how we feel at the moment. Mm -hmm. And we can only praise God for his leading. Mm -hmm. So I sol we solicit for your prayers as we continue to serve God and as we're looking forward to the day when Christ shall come. Mm -hmm. That Until then, let's continue to hold on to the faith that mm -hmm. God is still in control regardless of the situation. Um, Esmond is the only one who is away from us at the moment. He's in Michigan, but um, Winnie and um, Kelsey are with me at home, and I pray that um, I'll convey your regards to them, and they also send their greetings to you all, because uh, they couldn't come with me. It's a bit early in the morning now. It's 7, getting to 8 o'clock, and after this, I'm preaching after this um, also, so it's, been a, it's going to be a very busy morning for me. I want to invite you to bow your heads with me as we seek the Lord in prayer. Gracious Father, we thank you so much for giving us another opportunity for us to reconnect again as a church family. Lord, we pray that your spirit will be with us as we go through this sermon. And if even one soul's heart will be touched, we can give you praise and honor. Lord, I pray for those who are watching us on um, Zoom and also those who are on Facebook and other media, that they will also enjoy the same fellowship that we are having. Lord, it's my humble desire that this sermon will not be about me or anybody, but it will be about you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. I, if I go back to the scripture reading that... Um, but across there read to us earlier on from um, Genesis chapter 8, reading from verses um, 6 to 12. It talks about a man that God loved so much. Because if you go to the preceding chapters, chapter 6 and 7, especially chapter 6 talks about Noah finding grace in the sight of God. And when Noah found grace in the sight of God, the Bible says that, God instructed Noah to build an ark. But when you go to verse um, chapter 8 of this um, Genesis, it gives us an account that after the flood, and when Noah and his family were in the ark, the Bible says that God remembered Noah. And that is a very powerful statement 
If you read Genesis chapter 8, verse 1, it says, And God remembered. After they have been in the ark for so many years, as we go through this global crisis, let us remember that God called to rescue his people in time of crisis. So this is not going to be the first rescued mission that God has performed. God remembered Noah, and I'm glad that he remembered. And I want to tell you this morning that God is going to remember you. Regardless of the situation, whatever may be the crisis that you're going through, God is going to remember you. Sometimes you may feel that you have been forgotten. And where is God? And I know that many people are questioning God in terms of what is going on. But I want to tell you this morning is that God is still alive. Though sin may permeate the culture, immoralities and family problems, issues, ill health, and everything may go on. But I want to tell you that as we are going through this crisis, God is still alive. And he is so busy in the rescued mission, just like how Noah and his family were in the ark. And at that point in time, in Genesis chapter 8, verse 1, the Bible says that God remembered Noah. As the world go through all this moral and spiritual degeneration, there was a man who chose the right path and made a decision to be faithful with his family. He was committed and determined that he would do something different. Sometimes we have to make that commitment to say that whatever the world may be doing, ours may be different. Our life will be different. Our story will be different because we cannot follow what the world is doing. As we are going through this crisis and many people are losing their faith in God, then it's up to us for us to make that conscious decision to say that my Redeemer liveth. Regardless of what, I still believe in God. I trust him and my faith in him will never waver. But the Bible says that Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Noah was a just man, perfect in his generation. And the Bible says that Noah walked with God. Noah was a righteous man and found favor in the sight of God. I want to tell you this morning that righteousness always attracts God's favor. Righteousness always attracts God's favor. God made a decision to destroy the world, but God instructed Noah to build an ark and he will live. So if you are righteous in the sight of God, if you live with God, if you walk with God, the journey may not be easy, but God will always come into your aid. God will always rescue you. And in this case now, there, there, there is a false theology. There, there is a false theological teaching that once you are a Christian, there will be no problems. This, this is a false application and manipulation of the, of the truth for the sake of just attracting the crowd so that people will come in their numbers with the hope that when you are a Christian, when you are in church, your life will be peaceful and you will never encounter any problem. And this morning, I want to tell you that that, that, that is not true. This is called Christianity for the spiritually impaired because that is not what the Bible teaches. If you're a Christian, you won't get sick. You won't lose your job. And, and some even believe that if you're a Christian, you cannot contract COVID-19 because you're protected by the blood of Jesus. But I want to tell you that if you don't take the necessary precaution, the fact that you're a Christian doesn't mean that you're not going to get sick. Christianity does not guarantee that you will never have problems or go through storms or experience flood. But what, what the word of God guarantee is that you, you are in the right place when the storm hits, if you're a Christian. The problem may arise, but, but, but if you are in the right place when the flood arrives, not only would you survive, but you will rise high, to a higher place in the midst of the storm. If, if you look at it, you, you will strive. The, the, the key point is the problems may come, the ill health may come, you may lose your job, but if you are in Christ, the Bible says that in the midst of all this storm, you will rise higher and higher. L let me go further. Let me expand on this. At the end of the storm, where was Noah? Noah began this on a, on a level playing field. Noah was on the ground when the storm began. But, but at the end of the storm, Noah found himself on the mountaintop. That simply means that God raised Noah to a higher level than he, he was even before the flood. And that is to suggest to you that if you are in Christ, God is going to raise you higher. How many of us have been through storms in our lives? How many of us have been through storms that even when you Google your name, your storm shows up? 
Sometimes because of your ill health, you search for the disease to the point that as soon as you enter your name in the Google search, your, 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 your storm shows up. Because you are looking for a job, you put in so many applications that as soon as you put in, you, you log on into your computer, your, 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 your job search comes up. Because you, you, it has become part of you. Your name is being associated with your storm. And, and I want to tell you, you won't be where you started from. This must be your time of Mount Ararat. God is going to change that in his own way. It may not be the way you want it because God doesn't work the way we want. God works in his own time. And, and, and if you believe in him, there, there has been so many storms in my life and I know that the, the truth is, as a Christian, your life will never be devoid of a storm. Your habitation will determine your destination. What does that mean? It, it, it's not about the storm or the flood, but it's about the ark. Where, where do you find yourself? What is the name of your ark or your refuge? And, and I want to tell you this morning or this afternoon is that the, the, our ark or our refuge is no other person than in Jesus. That is why John chapter 15 verse 7 says, If you abide in me and I abide in you, and anything you ask will be done for you. If you are in Christ, not just attending church, but in Christ. Not just returning sight, but in Christ. Not just being a member of the church, but in Christ. There, there is a difference between being a member of the church and, and being in Christ. And what I'm talking about is not just church attendance, but abiding in Christ. The world is drowning, but you will be on top. Coronavirus is causing so many havoc. I don't know the situation in the UK. I know it's not far from the States, but I want to tell you that People are dying in their numbers. And, and, and that is a fact. The number is going up and up. The, the church sometimes fails to present Christ to the people. Not Christ, the good, uh, feel good therapist that makes you feel so good and you go to home and say, oh, the church was so nice. Not Christ, the ATM machine that people believe that, oh, you, when you're a Christian, you get money, you get rich. I, I want to tell you, but Christ, the hope of glory. The Messiah, the way, the truth, and the life, the resurrected. Yes, I believe that is a Christ who has given us his word that even in death, he is coming back again to take us home. So, so the hope that we have in Christ passes all understanding. So even if my body, my physical mortality is taken away from me, I have that hope that even at the second coming of Christ, the dead in Christ shall rise. So my hope in him passes all understanding. Because even in death, I still have hope. And, and, and that is the hope that I, I, we are talking about. The Lord is our refuge and strength, a very present help in times of what? In times of trouble. And, and that is the God that we serve. If you look at this story, it's very interesting to understand and to know that when the flood ended, or the, when the time came and Noah found, saw that the, the rain had stopped, the Bible says that Noah was so patient. And he did not rush to leave the ark. Uh, so, sometimes we, we step out without thinking or without asking God. We step out prematurely because we are so desperate. Uh, out of desperation, we act on impulse and not seek the way of the Lord. And, and this morning, I want to tell you that Noah was so patient after being in the ark for so many years, when, uh, uh, for so long, when the time came for him and his family to come out, Noah did not just rush out like that. First, the Bible says that he sent out the raven, the bed raven, to go out. Why raven? And if you read verse 4, it says, After 151 days, the seventh month, the 17th days of the month, on Mount Ararat, Noah sent out the raven. Why raven? Raven happens to be an animal that is being described as a scavenger. They eat dead things. So the Bible says that when Noah sent out the raven, the raven did not come back. Why did, was it that the raven did not come back? The raven did not come back because the raven is a scavenger. It feeds on the dead stuff. So the raven went out and the dead stuff out there, the raven was able to survive on the dead stuff out there. But the truth is Noah could not trust the raven survivor to be an indication that it's right for him to leave the ark. Sometimes we follow dead stuff. They are connected with dead things. The, the raven did not return because it will be able to survive on dead stuff. 
Noah did not step out based on that indication. He stepped out after receiving a proof of life from the dove. Sometimes in our Christian journey, we need to be patient. That is the problem we are facing today. Many people are stepping out following the raven, following dead things, dead dreams, dead memories, dead ideas, dead, everything is dead. And, 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 and sometimes we, we think, oh, why is it that my relationship is not going well? You prayed, but did you seek or did you ask God? Or out of desperation, anybody that came into your life, you just grab it. Because you need that job badly, you didn't even ask for God's permission. You didn't pray about, I'm, I'm desperate, anything goes. And then within short time, you find yourself in, in this situation. We, we follow that stuff, and because of that, we, 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 we find ourselves in the middle of nowhere, and, and it becomes a struggle for us to survive. Let me, let, me, let me go a little bit deeper this afternoon. There's a difference between the raven and the dove. What is the difference? The difference is that the raven is for pathetic and the dove is for prophetic, which is the future. Whereas the dove and the raven is for the past. So when you continue to dwell in your past, you cannot move on into the future. If you want to move on into the future, then you need to let your past go. In as much as we learn history, we learn history to correct the future. We don't learn history to stay in the past. The raven is about the old, while the dove is about the new. The raven reminds us of our past. The dove tells us of our future. The raven points to us the hill that you went through. The dove points you to heaven that is await of you. The raven says you are a victim. The dove says that you are more than a conqueror. So if you put your trust in the dove, the dove will always bring an indication of a bright future. That is why many of us cannot let go of our past because we are still holding on to the past. Raven says that look at what the devil did, but the dove says that look at what Christ has done for you. Which of them gives you hope? L l let, me, let me expand on this. After the Noah sent out the raven, and the Bible says that the raven did not come back. Noah sent the dove. At, at the first instance, the Bible says that the dove went around and around and around and then came back. And when the dove came back, Noah took the dove back into the ark. At that point, the dove did not come back with anything. Then Noah kept the dove for another seven days. And after seven days, Noah sent out the dove again. In biblical terms, the dove represents the spirit of God. If you, if you are to be successful, we must follow the dove. We must declare that the raven season is over. Our past is over. The time of dwelling on our past is over. We are looking at a bright future. In the midst of all this crisis, I want to tell you this afternoon that there is hope. That as we come out of this crisis, we will come out better than even before we started. But it all depends on your habitation, where you find yourself. Because if you abide by the, if you are in the ark, who is the ref, our refuge in Jesus, then you will come out even better than before the flood because Noah found himself on top of the mountain instead of below the mountain. But it all depends on your habitation. Where do you place yourself? Are you abiding in Christ? But if you continue to do the same thing over and over, expecting to have a different result, that is what is called insanity because you, you may not be able to achieve anything. God expects us to do things different. So when Noah sent out the raven, and the raven did not come back, Noah made a decision to send the dove. So this morning, I want to declare that the raven season is over. We need to move on. The first time, the dove came back empty-handed. But the second time, after seven days, the Bible says that Noah sent out the dove again. And seven represent perfection. The dove came back with something on the second occasion. The dove came back with something because the Spirit of God always brings proofs of life. The dove came back with an olive leaf in his beak. And about that, that does not justify that the dove came back with just any leaf, but olive leaf. And fellow believers in Christ, if you understand your Bible, it, it, it proves a point here that the dove did not come back with just any olive, uh, tree but olive tree which produces olive, and olive in turn produces olive oil, and the olive oil represents the anointing of God. Noah did not step out until there was a proof of an anointing waiting for him outside. So the dove did not come back with any other leaf, 
but olive leaf, which simply means that there was anointing waiting for Noah outside. Before you step out, you need to pray that God has prepared a place for you, has set, set a table before your enemies. God is going ahead of you. Sometimes we step out prematurely without thinking of what is ahead of us. We walk out not checking if there's anointing waiting for us. I want to tell you that there's anointing waiting for you if, if you abide in Christ and allow him to take over your life. He will lead you in the right path. It doesn't mean that the journey will be smooth, but God will take you through every step of the way. And that is what the Lord requires of us. The olive tree, let me, let me go a little bit deeper into the olive tree. The olive tree don't grow overnight. They are called survival trees. Floods can kill them. Drought can kill them. No matter what comes their way. And, and, and years ago, I had an experience when I, we went to Israel that we saw a tree, olive tree, that, that according to our tour guide was over 2,000 years. And he said it grows at a hard place, a rocky place. But once its roots are um, under the rock, it survives whatever comes its way. So once the olive tree, its roots are under the rock, no matter the storm, the olive tree will what? Survive. Because in order for you to get down or to, for the olive tree to come down, the rock needs to move. But we all know that the rock that we, uh, you and I have is, is no other rock than who? Jesus. So in order for us to be moved, uh, we, you, need, you need to move our rock. But I want to tell you that nobody can move that rock because once its, uh, its roots are solid, as far as the rock doesn't move, the olive tree will survive. As far as the rock doesn't move, your anointing will survive. Your marriage will survive and your health will survive. Because our rock and our refuge is Jesus. Your anointing will live. Noah, Noah lost friends and everything that he has worked for, but he did not lose his anointing. The olive was a proof, I'm still anointed, still blessed, still chosen. I'm still the favored one. The journey, I may be sick, but I want to tell you that the blessings of God is upon me. Sometimes you don't need to be in good health for you to praise God. Whatever may be your situation, God has been there for you and is protecting you and is taking you through that journey. And you need to praise God for whom his, and how far he has led you. Joseph, let me, let me tell you that Joseph did not lose his anointing. Even though he's, he lost his friends, his family, he was accused and he was in prison. But while he was still in prison, Joseph was still anointed. Even right in prison. And, and let me add another more. Elisha, Elisha died and he was buried. And the Bible says that although Elisha was dead and buried, the bones of Elisha did not lose his anointing. If you read 2 Kings chapter 13, verse 21, it says that when Elisha's body was buried and somebody else was, uh, was buried in the same uh, tomb and the dead body touches Elisha's body, that, the Bible says that that person came back alive. And, and that is the anointing that the Lord gives you, even, even in death. If you are anointed, if you are blessed, even in death, nobody can take that anointing from you. And that is what happened with Elisha. And I want to tell you, the anointing refuses to die. It survived the flood. It survived persecution. It survived failure. Thank God that there is anointing for you. No matter your situation, no matter the experience that you are going through, Noah had anointing of God. The fresh anointing, if you look at this story, the, the, the leaf that the dove brought back to Noah was not any dry, dead leaf. The olive leaf that the dove brought back to Noah, according to the Bible, the Bible says that it was a fresh leaf. If you read verse 11, it was a fresh leaf, which symbolizes or suggests to me that this olive tree survived the flood. It was a fresh, that simply means that it grew out of the flood and the storm. And we are going to survive regardless of coronavirus or whatnot because the Lord is our refuge. And, and, and that is the news that you have. Leave, your leaf shall be like, and as Psalms 1 verse 3 says, it shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that brings forth its fruit in its season, whose leaves also shall not what? Wither. And whatever he does shall what? Prosper. 
Get rid of the raving attitude, the insecurity, the dead people around you. It can't be a done attitude. Remove the language of the raving from your vocabulary. Do not allow anybody to frustrate you or tell you that you cannot achieve anything. If you're a young person and you're listening to me this morning, I want to tell you that God has something special in store for you. Do not be discouraged or frustrated by somebody who does not believe in you. Because somebody may tell you, you're good for nothing, you're going to come out of nothing. But I want to tell you that the anointing of God is with you. The journey may not be easy. That person may not be in charge of your destiny because your destiny is in the hands of God. And he is the only one who can determine your destiny. <coughs> the Bible says, if, if you go further to verse 12, then Noah sent the dog the third time. So the first, let me recap. The first time the dog came back with nothing. The second time, the dove came back with what? With the olive uh, leaf. Then Noah took the dove back in. And the third time, after waiting for another seven days, Noah sent the dove out again. But the Bible says at this point in time, the dove did not return on the third occasion. The first thing Noah did was that at this point in time, Noah saw that if the dog was able to survive out there and did not come back to him again, that simply means that there's life outside because the dog does not depend or feed on dead stuff. The dog feed on the fresh stuff. So if the dog was able to survive out there, that simply means that there's life out there and it's safe for me to go out. So Noah and his family at this point in time were ready to leave the ark. That is the reason why I want to tell you this morning that the raving season is over because the raven feeds on dead stuff, scavengers, things that are dead. But if you follow the dove, it's about a fresh anointing, things of the future, things that the Lord has in store for you. And that is the hope that I want to give you this morning. So at this point, if you read verse 20 to 21, it says, Noah came out of the ark. And when Noah came out of the ark, the first thing that Noah did was that he, he, he erected a, an altar. He created the altar of praise and rendered sacrifice. And the Bible says that then God smelled the aroma of, of Noah's sacrifice. And, and when God smelled the aroma of no, uh, Noah's sacrifice, then God said, never again would I do this to the world. There, there, there is some praise. So when Noah and his family came out of the ark, they, all that they did was to praise God and, and, and perform sacrifice to God and, and because of what the Lord has done for them. I, I want to tell you there is a praise. There, there is a praise that comes from the heart. Because of your experience, when you are praising God, it comes from the heart. So sometimes when somebody comes to church and they are praising God and you don't understand why they are praising God, leave them alone. Because they are the only ones, they know what they've been through and what the Lord has done for them. So when they are shouting and they are raising their hands and you don't have any praise, just keep quiet and let them be. Because where they are coming from, they are the only ones who understand what the Lord has done for them. When they are shouting and they are tapping their feet, just leave them alone because they know that a few weeks ago they were in hospital and they were about to die and through divine providence that the Lord rescued them. So there's a praise. That comes from a survivors of storm. And when they are praising God, they praise God from their heart that only them can testify of the goodness of God. So anybody around them seeing or hearing their praise feels that, oh, this is, this is, this is just a noise. But I want to tell you that there's a praise that comes out of survivors, people who have been through something. If you have never been through storm, sit down and keep quiet. If you have never been through storm after storm and after storm, there is a praise that comes from a deepest part of your heart that can move God. And the measure of uh, the measure, uh, the, you, you measure the size of your blessings based on the magnitude of your hill. So if you have been through a lot and you're praising God, you praise God with, without even thinking about what somebody may say. That is the reason why when we come to church and sometimes people think somebody is mad, why are you... You leave them alone. They are the only ones who knows what the Lord has done for them or how far the Lord has brought them and in their Christian journey. And if you don't understand their story, don't criticize them. God says that never again. And that is a praise of a survivor of a storm. When Noah and his family were sacrificing and praising God, God says never. You can't dance in the promised land until you know how to sing in the desert. The praise was so powerful that prompted God to say, never again will I do this. 
Never would I destroy the world. Never would I allow my son to suffer like this. Never. So when you praise God, God moves. And I want to tell you that don't think about your problem. Think about praising God. And the more you praise God, the more God helps you to lift you up. And that is what Noah did. When Noah came out of the ark, the first thing that he did was to perform sacrifice and praise God for whom all blessings would flow. I don't know about your experience, but I want to tell you as I bring this sermon to a close. Do not be doom and gloom. Do not think that you're carrying the burdens of this world. And sometimes when we come to church, we feel that, oh, the world is against us. I want to tell you, if you look at your life, count your blessings and name them one by one. Because the Lord has done great and greater things for you. The raving season is over. The dead stuff is over. The journey may not be easy. You may be sick. You may still be struggling. The pains and the ache may be there. But I want to tell you that you are a survivor. And the survivor praise moves God. And the raving season is over. You are looking forward to the time when you can say that we, the future is bright. God is still in control. That is why I love Revelation chapter 21. It says that I, I, I saw the new Jerusalem coming down, adorned or prepared as a bride for her husband. And it says that Christ himself is going to what? Wipe away every tear from our eyes. And it says there will be no more death. There will be no more what? Pain. And it says the past, uh, the past is what? Over. And that is the assurance that we have. The raving season is over. We are moving forward to the future. Noah, at the end of the storm, found himself on Mount Ararat, on top of the mountain. And I want to tell you this afternoon that at the end of this storm, no matter what, we are going to be on top of the mountain. Why? Because if Jesus is in our boat, we can smile at the storm. And that is the hope that I want to live with you. May God be with you as we go through this crisis together. The journey is not going to be easy. The crisis will come. The difficult time may come. But I want to tell you, your habitation determines your destination. If you abide in Christ and allow God to lead you, at the end, you end up on top. May God bless you all. Amen. 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 Can we unmute, please, just for amen. Pastor up here to hear us saying amen. 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 Hey, sister, how are good to see you? I didn't know that you're here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yes, Pastor. I, I heard, so I thought I'd come and see you. <laughs> <laughs> okay.
Ade, Sister Mackenzie, yeah. Sister Woodstock, Sister Hilton, yeah. and yeah. Um, the rest of them, yeah. everyone. Yeah. yeah, some of them may be on YouTube. Yeah, and I can yeah. see Brother Vickers is on. I saw Brother Vickers yeah. and your bicycle at the back. Are you still riding? Yeah. <laughs> Yes, I would imagine he is. <laughs> Thank you very much, Pastor. At this time, you know, he has given us a message of hope and uh, consolation, one that takes us not to look back, not to dwell on our situation, but one to help us to look ahead. Because if we allow the Holy Spirit to guide us, he will, he will lead us to something better than where we're coming from. So we thank you, Pastor, for that message of hope and assurance. At this time, to close our service, we will sing in number 338, Redeem. Shall we bow our heads for prayer? Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for giving us another Sabbath day that we've been able to come before you to worship you and to praise your name. Lord, we thank you for the message that you've given us this hour that will draw us closer to you to understand your way that in the midst of the crisis that we are going through, you still love us and you care. Lord, I pray for our members who are not feeling well this morning, we remember Sister Williams, um, Sister Mackenzie, and Sister Ade. And there may be others who are also going through the various challenges in their lives. But we believe that the same way you were able to rescue Noah and his family, you are still in the business of performing that rescued mission, and you will be there for each and every one of them. Lord, I pray that your blessings will be upon each family represented here and those who are watching us online that your blessings will be upon us for us to understand that you still love us and you care. Lord, as many people are questioning, where is God? May this be an opportunity where people may seek you and they will find you, those who are seeking for the truth. But the most important thing is we wait for the day when all this trouble shall come to an end, when you shall come back again to take us home. But whilst we are waiting, strengthen our faith in you so that our faith in you will not waver until the day when you shall come back, either dead or alive, 
that we will be taken into your kingdom and spend eternity with you. May your blessings be upon us as we come to the end of the service today. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 Thanks again, Pastor Hapir, for blessing us with the word of the Lord and also with your presence. Thank you, Ada. Ada Griffith. Thank you.